Letty along with Acacia Courtney. And you see up there, there is 59 minutes to post time. And that means you have 59 minutes <laughs> to beat the expert because you got to get your selections in before the first race starts today. Yes, just under an hour. If you can pick more winners on today's nine race card than me, you always see our top three selections. <laughs> but this is just the winner. So make sure you get on in there. Go to facebook.com slash Gulfstream Park. You can also check out the Gulfstream Park Twitter. And don't forget to use hashtag beat the expert let us know that you're playing if you pick more winners than me you'll have a chance to win one of those awesome polo shirts plus the bragging rights the bragging rights are the most important <laughs> part of that uh, we're going to start today with a fast main track we got a firm turf course of course we have the normal sultry weather here in <laughs> south florida and uh, we're going to go through our wagering menu today in race number one we're going to start it with the early pick five case is going to have a ticket to show you race number two today is where our first of a super rolling high fives start our rolling super high fives start in race number two you need seven contestants or more seven runners in the race to uh, be part of that then we're going to switch to race number four today and that's where the rainbow six starts twenty two thousand dollars plus in that pool and if you are not aware it is only a 20 cent wager and my partner here yesterday hit the late pick five <laughs> with a really nice winner in the last race we joked about it i did not use that horse at all and she wanted so pay attention to our pick five tickets today and that once again the last one is a 50 cent wager so uh with that taken care of tomorrow just uh, a heads up we'll have an 11 race card tomorrow we've got a stakes yeah. race so uh should be a fun day of racing throughout this weekend absolutely we have uh, uh, 11 races tomorrow 10 races on sunday but i think today is probably the most important because you're trying to beat the expert and I'm ready. She's ready. She was. She told me this morning she <laughs> is ready to do this. Well, let's get right into the action. First race, one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. These are claimers. They're fillies and mares. They're three-year-olds and up. They're non-winners of three races in life. Or you can run straight three-year-olds in here for a $16,000 tag. And we do have uh, two scratches in here. Scratch the number seven, Tartaletta. Also scratch the main track only, number eight, Sheer Chance in race one. And uh, let's go with your early pick five ticket. Maybe you can hit the early... <laughs> And the late one today. Yes, no pressure at all. I was able to find a single today. I went uh, fairly deep in the first two races. Uh, quite a few wide open races today, I thought, on the card. Uh, my single came in race number four with the two horse golden ride. So we'll see how that plays out. $48 ticket today. $48 ticket. So you see that and uh, did very well with a single, as I mentioned, in mm -hmm. the last race yesterday. And uh, let's go. How did you go here? I went with the number one pillowcase. So we'll start it there. Stepping up today. Stretching out after rallying strongly, defeated 12 5, two lifetime claimers going seven and a half furlongs. That was the first start after the claim by trainer Tamara Lee. Semi Camacho was back in the saddle today, and I thought that race earned this one uh, uh, my top pick, even though stepping up to the next level. Absolutely, I think it's a logical step up to the next level. I use this horse on top as well, also st uh, stretching out slightly. Uh, it's been running at seven and a half furlongs for the past couple of races, going to try the mile in the 16th now, so a little bit of extra real estate on the turf but i agree one impressively one by three lengths last time out so a logical step up in class and in distance the other horse we both use we got the same exact during the opening event is starship sassy uh, the two horse stretching out today to that distance you were talking about mile in the 16 a couple of sharp closing bids at mm -hmm. seven and a half furlongs includes that 16,000 two lifetime score last time out i mean uh, handicap in 101 makes you think that this horse will be able uh, to run well at this mile in the 16th distance absolutely there, there is a little bit of concern because uh, he, she hasn't yet had a win at this distance. She's right. 0 for 7, but she does have some really nice closing ability. She's now third off of the layoff, ran in, in December, came back in April, got that win last time out. She'll also have Luca Panici aboard again, who had three wins yesterday, been going yeah, very well. Yeah, he's been riding in great form. Now, close it out with the number five in here, Mo Weez. Yeah, I keep trying with Mo <laughs> Weez, you know. Uh, a few starts back had a very impressive victory, one by four lengths at the mile on the turn. Curve. Stepped up in class a little bit. We've showed that video a couple of times now. Uh, stumbled at the start. Just wasn't able to do run any, any running.
running two back. Last time out was at the seven and a half on the turf and was beaten by two and a quarter lengths after having to go wide. So we'll see how a little bit of extra distance does for her. Yeah, I close it out with the six devious, Maddie, who set uh, a set to pace second versus this caliber competition. That was going a mile. It was back on May 12th. Is dropping to this level today after chasing the face and fading last time out. But that was $20,000. And it was open claimers at this distance last time out. She's a definite pace factor in this spot. And mm -hmm. that's why I threw her on the ticket. And I like the fact that she's going back against condition claimers here. I think she's definitely better suited to this level. Last time out, it almost seemed as though she was eased a bit up towards the end uh, by the finish line. So we'll see if she's able to maintain that speed this time. Well, we're going to a fast main track for race number two today. Five furlongs maiden claimer, two-year-old Phillies. And we have one jockey change to report here. It comes on the number five. Cootie Alert, uh, that's the <laughs> name of the horse, and Tyler Gaffigone will be riding Cootie Alert today. So uh, how'd you go <laughs> in race number two? Uh, well, I went with the number one that music makes sense on top. Uh, this one is one of those wide open races that I mentioned. I used the number five cootie alert in my early pick five ticket, but I went with the one music makes sense on top who has had one start so far, and I want to go back and show her debut performance. Uh, she didn't break well, and you'll see that when we get the video rolling. She's the number eight here. This was back on June 2nd, so she's had a couple of weeks off now. And uh, you see, she just didn't really break well. She actually... Um, got cut off a bit it took her a while to get settled and yet she still managed to make up quite a bit of ground we'll cut now you see that she's there behind the pack of leaders this was against $25,000 maiden claimers and it, there were some clear standout horses here but you see she's running very gamely yeah. after that poor yeah. debut and sometimes horses in their first start they're just not comfortable in the starting gate and they're not able to get a clean break well the horse I have on top number six silver diva has a similar situation mm -hmm. happening too she's going to stretch out the five furlongs today. After her, I thought a useful four and a half furlong career debut in the slop. And we want to go back and show you this one. She gets, uh, if we can, you know, key it up at the start, you'll see she gets bumped back to last here. And, and I just wanted to show that. So she's she's off her gain soon coming out of the gate. She's the number three. And you'll see her here. You know, she just gets bumped back to last, which course. And if you follow her along, you'll see that, you know, she's, she's up against it. Now I want to switch to the stretch. She doesn't really close, but look where she is now. She's Five wide in there, and I just think off that performance, she had to go that way because of the hits horses on the inside. And here's a horse that I think, you know, we mentioned it's a wide open affair that has reason to improve this afternoon after that the trouble at the start. Five wide trip, you don't see her on the screen, but I think that she may be able to move forward there this afternoon. So, mm -hmm. a, a wide open affair. We both used those horses on a ticket. Right. Similar situations yeah. in their debut. Yeah, and the, the, the number six Silver Diva also finished behind India Mantuana, who was the next out winner so a little bit of a key race there some horses have been able to improve off of that performance and I agree they've actually finished uh, beaten similar lengths had similar starts so when you have some first time starters like that again the break is that unfamiliar and, territory. and just to note that music made sense you mentioned Indian Matuana beat uh, music makes sense in that next start. Right. That's the race she comes out of. So these horses uh, at the $25,000 level, uh, you know, have sort of intertwined, and we'll see how they run. Now, who else did you use on your ticket? Went to the, the number three horse in here. I did. I went with the number three, Melissa, who's coming back in just seven days. Uh, was outside in, in her debut. She's dropping from Maiden Special Way into Maiden Claiming Company, and that's one of the big reasons uh, that I used her. She's half to a, um, a graded stakes place and a Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies place horse named Colonel Joan, who was a Wesley Ward trainee. So there's some interesting pedigree there as well. Uh, she's by Majestic Warrior, who does pretty well with uh, two-year-olds and maiden claiming about 18% her sire. Well, number five, cootie alert. Seems <laughs> I'm saying this an awful lot. Here's the daughter of Mount McKinley. Oh, now I can understand why they named the cootie alert, because uh, Mount McKinley <laughs> figured that one out. Uh, you know, he's going to debut for Trina Monte Thomas. Six useful workouts over the track. Freshman gets Lasix, and as we mentioned, that's where the jockey change mm -hmm. comes to Tyler Gaffleon. So Tyler back and riding and uh, always a good sign. And so we'll see how race two, but uh, wide open affair right there. Absolutely. Race number three, five furlongs on the turf. These are claimers, three-year-olds and upward. The claiming level is $10,000. We do have a scratch in their horse I really like today. I'm going to have to wait for another day. And that's the seven East Rock. With that, I scratched into the five Noble Prince. Where you went to the outside with the number eight horse in here. And that is super secret. Oh, this one's 10 to one on the morning line. 
So if this one comes through, it'll certainly be a pretty good payoff. But this is a horse that I really like. Uh, benefited last time out from an early pace duel. Came out of that race uh, behind, uh, in front of, excuse me, Athon and Casey Wegman. Horses that ran yesterday. Athon came back to win impressively yesterday. So that is becoming a little bit of a key race as well. This one was the one that closed behind that really fast early speed. Now, as I mentioned, eighth on one yesterday showed to be some powerful speed. Two back, super secret, the eight horse finished behind Pay Any Price, another speedy horse on the turf. So had some good performances there, both with Emmy Sale Jaramillo aboard, who's going to ride again. And uh, quickly give you a stat on trainer Stephen DeMauro in the past five years with horses that won last time out in sprints. 11 for 70, about 16% win, but in the money 44% of the time. Uh, $1.62 ROI, so pretty decent there, but I thought pretty consistent numbers and again this horse has just seemed to be performing well well you know we mentioned the scratch of east rock and if you look at east rock's past performance this horse always on the lead was going to turn back to five furlongs today so we lose one of the speeds right. in here so a noble prince moved to the ramon moya barn via uh, the claim after setting swift fractions of 20 and 4 43 and 3 when beaten three quarters of a length versus this uh, level uh, at this distance last time out uh, i think he'll be mixing it up as soon as they spring the gate latch to this afternoon and I just think with the scratch of the number seven East Rock moves him up in my estimation uh, as I mentioned I had that scratch horse on top but I, I like the five now because of that now you went to the three and second it's time to left who I added to my ticket yeah, this horse is really well tested at the distance. Eight-time winner uh, at the five furlong distance on the turf, eight for 25 there. But coming off of about a four-month layoff, last ran in February with a disappointing performance there. That was actually behind Noble Prince. But obviously, it seemed like there was something that uh, needed to take a little break from, was keeping some pretty good form prior to that. In fact, had a string of three wins in a row back in the fall. Yeah, and uh, that race that he comes out of, the one that Noble Prince won, three horses came out to mm -hmm. win their next start. So coming back into Barnes, does app excellent work that is trainer Dave Casson so uh, I added that one to the ticket there but the horse I had in second was the two dreaming of Frank who has shown the, the ability to, to come from off the pace is turned back looking to sit that uh, nice trip behind the speed last time out I don't know maybe the scratch of the number seven is gonna hurt this horse's chance today Angel Rodriguez and got Cornelio Velasquez in the saddle here's a horse that's gonna sit the trip behind the speed that was uh, softened a little bit with that mm -hmm. scratch in here so uh, who who else did you well you used a five oh, yeah. horse on your ticket so eight to ten to one that's a pretty good price that's what yeah. you need to make those super high <laughs> fives and the early pick fives pay really well we're going to take a short break when we come back we'll show you my rainbow six ticket Welcome back to Gulfstream today, Ron and Acacia, the expert. Don't forget <laughs> to uh, play along today and uh, try and beat Acacia and get one of those sharp polo shirts. Uh, and uh, if you're lucky enough to beat her, and she's been going real good, so I don't mm. know how hard, uh, easy it's going to be, I should say. So as I mentioned, this fourth race, one mile claimers, Phillies and Mayors, three and up, non-winners of two in life, $12,500, scratch to four in here, China Bella. Let's uh, quickly show you my Rainbow Six ticket today. And uh, we're batting with about 22, 23,000 to start the day. You see, I went too deep in here with the one and the two. Three, two, three, two, and then four. Don't usually go this high on my tickets when the carry is not allowed. $57.60. But as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. a lot of wide open races today. Yeah, finding a single was a bit tough. I took a stab and singled right here in this race with the number two golden ride, as I mentioned. Uh, hasn't actually had a, a real victory to her name. She got bumped up to win by disqualification two back. She was only beaten by half a length that day. She was bumped. And, and I think that if she had been able to continue traveling on the way that she was, she might have been able to actually cross 
across the finish line first that day. Tried the turf last time out, first off the claim in the Ruben Monjes barn. Uh, and now we'll return to the main track, the scene of the crime, if you yeah, will. Yeah, let's show that race. Uh, we're going to show the start. First, we'll show the start of this race here. And I actually wrote down Golden Rule, but it is not Golden Rule. <laughs> it is Golden Red. But you'll see the start here, Golden Ride. Yeah, it just gets, you know, slammed pretty good at the start. You'll see there, that's the horse right there. The number five getting knocked back. Now we're going to go switch it and go. Well, as this horse gets into the final turn, you see, the horse has really got nowhere to go. Looking for a place. Now, as we go back, drops back, always looking for a pace. And, and then you're going to go to the stretch here. And I thought this horse, you'll see this horse come flying at the end. So I can understand you singling it. It had double trouble in the race and, and was, you know, coming on and coming on in the race in there. Ended up uh, finishing fourth that day, but had mm -hmm. certainly had some trouble. So I can understand Golden Ride uh, being a single on your ticket. One of the two horses I did use on my Rainbow Six ticket. Absolutely. The other one that we both used is the number one, Little Kate, in who's first off the claim moving over into the carries of Osh Barn. Uh, disappointed as the odds on favorite last time out. Yeah, and you know, that was behind sheer chance and the next that winner called Miss Nadine at this level and distance. I think it's a logical choice. Mm -hmm. Sort of got to be a forgiving sort. We mentioned that a lot last <laughs> time out, but these horses can bounce back. They take chances beating each other. Right. The third horse, we're exact in agreement <laughs> here with the number six, Misty Phyllis is a candidate. Again, <laughs> we're talking about a, a rebound performance after following her open Lent maiden score going a mile in the 16th. Runs a fourth place finish in the slop at this level and distance last time out. Mm -hmm. No, maybe rebounds and, and great to share today. Yeah, I don't think that she liked the slop. Um, reserved and sat just behind the pace uh, in her maiden victory. And as you said, won very impressively like right. that. Seven and a half lengths at the mile of 16th. So she'll try the mile today at the 12.5. And that was also her first start against winners last time out and had that uh, misfortune to get the sloppy track. So we'll see if she's able to improve off of that. Well, let's uh, flip the page. We'll go to race number five. Five furlongs <laughs> on the turf. Claimers, Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up 10,000. Scratch the main track only, number 10, Jill's Comprise. And race number five on a nine-race card is where Acacia's uh, late pick five ticket uh, is. And let's show it to you right now. Let's give you a peek at my late pick five ticket, $40.50 today. I singled in a race number seven uh, with the number eight horse, Magic 2, for Ralph Zadie. So we'll see if that one comes in. I went three deep in the rest of the legs. I agree with you. It was difficult to find a single, and in order to try and keep but affordable i tried and, and went with that horse in them in and, and that's seven. sort of what you got to do unless you got those you know deep pockets where <laughs> you can roll it out i mean this is a very affordable ticket yeah. so it's, it's good to see now I, I started off in here with the number five crime buzz who was a good third on the turf versus a notch tougher that was two starts back goes back to the turf today after splashing through the mud to defeat the ten thousand dollar condition claimers at the distance i, I think she's a major mm -hmm. player whatever surface we might end up with today it looks mm -hmm. like the turf is firm and it's going to be that way by this time i think she's a logical contender well, we, we talked about this a little bit this morning. Uh, the only race that we did discuss a bit was this one because if either one of our trifectas hits, if they stay close <laughs> to their morning line prices, they're going to be some pretty good ones. Crime Buzz 10 to 1 on the morning line. You mentioned found that muddy track last time out. Showed a lot more speed than usual. She's normally pretty forwardly placed, but went right out to the front, pulled away to win by four and a half lengths. She's going to go back over to the turf now. Um, her last start on the turf was two back. That was at the 12-5 level. She was only beaten by a length and a half. And I think that you'll get a good price on her potentially today. Um, maybe she'll go down as, as far as the betting comes, but I agree. I think she's a very logical player. Do you trust your intuition? I do trust my intuition. Well, let's talk about it. Yeah, then. because I went with <laughs> trust your intuition from the rail. So, well, hopefully my intuition is right in this one. Uh, this one was beaten by two lengths the last time out. Was dueling after showing a little bit of speed. That was after cutting back from seven and a half to five furlongs there. Kristen Mohal is the trainer. Elvis Trujillo will be aboard. Been keeping very good form since moving over into the Kristen Mohal barn. So I think that this horse might be able to continue on with that kind of performance and hopefully uh, improve off of it. Got a nice breeze right yes. there. Yes. Yeah, just some breeze coming through here. Uh, we both used the number seven, Little Miss Smarty K, who I thought was game in defeat when she returned from an eight-month layoff to come with a neck. She came with a neck of spring in a 47-to-1 upset at this level and distance. 
You're not going to get those double digit odds today. Yeah. She's eight to one in the morning line. You're certainly not going to get 47 to one. And I like the fact that we both have this eight to one shot on our ticket. I think it ran okay. I think so too. Just missed by a neck. And that was off of about an eight month layoff as well. So a very beneficial performance. Whether she's able to continue on with that kind of uh, performance. She came out of that same race there as uh, Trust Your Intuition as well as the two Starship Amanda who you also used. And I thought all, all of those top four horses really did some nice running in the latter stages. Yeah, I mean, Starship Amanda try and make a two in a row against, as you mentioned, is familiar competition. Mm -hmm. She returned from a nine-month layup to win a hard by that hard fort neck last time out. So these are horses are pretty equal and everything like that. The obvious concern I have is that she might bounce after that mm -hmm. game outing last time out. Maybe the reason you didn't use it on your ticket. That was one of my main concerns. Uh, as you mentioned, came off of the nine-month layoff. She was pulled off, pulled up before uh, taking that nine months off. So hopefully she's able to continue back in good form. Well, let's go to race number six. This one's a five for a long maiden special weight for two-year-olds. Pretty nice race in here. We have a scratch of number five, Little Chesney in here. And uh, both of us have the number eight, the Kingfish, who actually started its career on the turf. Yes, and I want to go back and show that race uh, from the debut of the Kingfish. He's going to try the dirt for the first time today. He's the number six there. And you can just see as soon as the video starts rolling, you just get slammed at the gate. Uh, ended up finishing third that day. It just bumps into the gate. We talked about it earlier. We showed a couple of breaks there and then had to go wide trying to find a spot. This was a lot of first time starters in this race. Uh, and, and now weaving back <laughs> over towards the rail. And it's all about with those early uh, horses that they, that they just don't know what's happening yet. And, and you know, this horse here, if you would have that race would have went farther, went along the inside, finally in the stretch, yep. and closed very well to yes. be third. Now going to go to the uh, main track today, mm -hmm. and I just thought of that performance. Even though it was on the turf, I think these youngsters, uh, you know, tried that. I think this horse mm -hmm. will run as well on the main track. Now, number nine, and we, oh, we're exact Freeman here, mm -hmm. too. Down in the hollow, this one is a half-brother to multiple stakes winners, Jackson Bend mm -hmm. and Grand Shores, stretching out the five furlongs, rallied to finish third. That was in its four-and-a-half furlong maiden special weight event that produced uh, a couple of next out winners one called draft beer mm -hmm. i know you like <laughs> and a little nappy so uh yes. mark cassie Another jose favorite. caraballo in the saddle and uh, we're having a little bit of a rain yes. storm here yes the rain has started to come down a little bit so keep an eye on those uh, uh turf and <laughs> dirt conditions as the race goes uh, the racing day goes on but um I don't think the heavy stuff's going to come down. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Uh, but anyway, I use the down in the hauler as well. And the sire Brooks and Down is a relatively new sire as well, but has had quite a few winners uh, with, uh, with a few foals. So going pretty well. And as you mentioned, came with some next out winners. Little Nappy was actually the first winner for Shackleford right. as a sire and won very impressively. Right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a pretty nice Logical. race, this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and the number two called to war. Half brother to Florida, sire stakes, winner holy well. Yeah. So, uh, has a reason to win early. Working nicely as well, trainer Jose Pinchin and Emmy Sale Jaramillo in the saddle. Yeah, high cotton. I looked it up. 19 for 145, 13% with two-year-old first-time winners. That's a pretty good stat. You say it's only 13%, mm -hmm. but that's 145 yeah. horses, two-year-olds making their first ever start. So that is race number six. Let's go to the seventh race. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Maiden claim is Phillies and Mayors, three and up, $12,500. Scratch number six, cross my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we both had the number eight. I had this horse on top. This was actually my single right. magic too. Right. Ralph Zadie, the trainer. John Cruz is going to be in the saddle, cutting back in distance. Ran at a mile and a sixteenth on the turf last time out. Showed a lot of uh, speed, and I think that this horse will probably be the main player of the pace scenario here. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I got to stay out of a speed duel with the horse that I put on top, mm -hmm. and these two horses might cancel themselves out. Uh, I think you got the right, uh, you know, horse on top in there. But I went to the one, I'll tell you why, Majestic Legacy. Going to break from that rail again. Went up, set the pace, got nipped at the wire when finishing third beat and a half that length at this level and distance. I see these two horses, you know, maybe dueling it out, maybe mm -hmm. setting it up for somebody else that's going to come from off the pace like a Solidare. Yes, that's entirely possible. We have the same three horses just flip-flopped around, and I had the same thought process. <laughs> this one is also cutting back in distance. Solidare ran at a mile and the 16th last time out and didn't perform too well. Uh, two back uh, ended up getting bumped and performed well that day. Ended up uh, being moved up to third through disqualification. So might be able, if there is that fast pass pace scenario, to close nicely. Well, let's go to race number eight this afternoon. Five and a half furlongs. Claimers, three-year-olds and up. Non-winners of two races in life. $10,000. Scratch the inside horse in here. No 
number one wild praise. And uh, uh, a lot of people say this to me about the number two. So you think you're a Romeo. <laughs> oh, a lot of people say this to you? No, no yeah, I just yeah. wish they did. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now we know secret dreams. Well, I, I think that this one is a logical one to have on top. Uh, Ron Nicoletti's namesake, if you will. <laughs> this one uh, showed some nice pace in the past couple of starts. Last time was first off the claim in the barn of Reed Nagel and had a very solid third. Matt Rispoli is going to stay aboard. Well, the number six horse that we both have on our tickets here, time out of my move today, Antonio Sano Barn, via the claim, wheels back mm -hmm. in seven days after setting the pace and getting caught late when third. That was a five furlong sprint that was moved from the turf mm -hmm. to a sloppy main track. Uh, Antonio Sano going to show you a stat on the source. Over the last five years, first start after the claim, mid-level claimers. He's six for 16, 38 percent. 56% in the money with a really nice ROI of 347. He is our leading mm -hmm. trainer now. He's in a battle with uh, Ralph Nix, but uh, Antonio Isano always does a good job, so just thought I'd throw that stat out there. Absolutely, and I think it's a good sign that this horse was off for 13 months and then was claimed, and now it's coming back in just seven days. I think that's a good indication of fitness. Also, had been running on the turf uh, more towards uh, the start of his career when uh, taking that big break. And as you mentioned, found the sloppy track last time out, and I think he's going to try and stick on the dirt. So logical for that reason as well. Well, tell me about this horse you got on your ticket, the number eight. It's a really nice price. It's yeah, Sigma. 12 to 1 on the morning line, coming off about an eight-month layoff. And this one's a first-time gelding. Didn't show too much in, in his debut, but then came back and won by five lengths at five and a half furlongs against $12,500 made in claimers has been working nicely for his return so a long break for sure but first time gelding and working consistently for the comeback well the horse i thought for sure you'd have on the ticket was the number three iced coffee it's dropping <laughs> to this ten thousand dollar level first start since coming up empty that was a 16-2 lifetime claimer going five <laughs> furlongs on the surf it was back in february but if you note the trainer obi mirage he's four for 11 very limited sampling 36 percent with a with horses returning from a 61 to 180 days layoff mm -hmm. it's a you know, small sampling in there, and it's not zero down to just, you know, horses uh, going sprinting. But I thought that there's something that I would mention mm -hmm. here. A nice coffee on the line, I think at 4 to 1 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 4 to 1 in the morning line, coming off of about that four-month layoff. And uh, you do know my coffee addiction. Yes, she <laughs> loves that iced coffee. That was uh, why we said that. I said that. No, she didn't say that. I did. Race number nine this afternoon, five furlongs turf. Maiden claim is three and up, $12,500. Scratch the two. Irish warrior, and I went with the number eight in here, getaway car, but the horse I have in second, you have in top, and that is Wadi. Yeah, this horse uh, finished a very good second last time out, considering that the runaway winner, uh, Canarsie Kid, who was making it a couple in a row, ended up winning that day by seven lengths, and uh, this horse took a little bit of money, also finished ahead of Shape of My Heart, who was a next out winner, so a little bit of a key race there. It just seemed like everything sort of clicked a bit. I just found this race, the final race of the day, really light in the speed department. Yeah. I really couldn't find the pace, and that's why I went with the eight getaway cards. Claim and take sliced in half. Debuts on the turf today after chasing the pace and finishing fourth, but that was against $25,000 maidens going six furlongs on the main tra track. It's a gelded son of Circular Key, and I think he's part of the pace in here. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a bit of a speed play. You guys can go back and look. You see a thick of right in here. I couldn't find any, you know, yeah. outstanding speed in this race. I agree, and that's, that's why I went the seven templar glory in second because i think that this is one who will probably be a little bit more forwardly placed as well has stalked the pace in the last couple of races hasn't really shown too much uh in terms of finishes on the dirt but is now switching over to the turf for the first time has a couple of winning turf siblings and also the sire parading as it strikes about 13 percent on the turf you've done this two days in a row my long shot is your second pick <laughs> in the last race templar glory my long shot of the day for all the reasons you mentioned thought it might be a yeah. speed play along with the number eight getaway car and this horse 10 to 1 mm -hmm. on the morning line so uh, sorry for you you're starting to think like me which is not good <laughs> oh, with, no. that, with that said the number one horse we both have in the talk ticket and that is jingle bells Yes, Jingle Bells. We had the Christmas pass to stake the other week. Uh, but Jingle Bells is an interesting one. Dropping from Maiden Special Weight Company into Maiden Claiming. Uh, bumped at the start. We talked about that. That seems to be the theme for today. You're bumping right. at the start with these younger horses. But I thought it was a very valuable experience in his debut. Going to try uh, Maiden Claiming Company today and see if that helps.
Yeah, so that is how we see the night race card on Friday afternoon. Uh, stay in touch with our truck and out Larry. Larry, I'm saying, I'm thinking of Larry. <laughs> Pete Aiello, sorry about that, Pete. Uh, Pete will be here in a couple of seconds and just update you on everything. We have a little bit of rain coming down now, but the main track has now been sealed, so you know that when you start your handicap. Turf course still listed as firm. That should be a good day. Stay dry, and don't forget to try and beat the expert. That's right.